Um, basically today I'd like to go over what we've been doing in um, one of the FIDO working groups along with the W3C and then some hooks into IETF that we've been, we've been working on. Um, so as you, as Rolf's gone over some of the FIDO technology, um, one of the things that we um, found out when we joined was basically, you know, we've had a lot of experience in distribution. Um, what we saw missing here was basically platform support for FIDO technology. Um, you know, up until this point, FIDO was delivered by various vendors out there with the libraries and everything. And you had to add all the extensions for the browsers and things. So it got kind of cumbersome to, to start to implement and deploy um, FIDO technology. And so our goal in joining um, FIDO was to make sure that, you know, every major platform has the FIDO API in it. You know, this includes web platforms, OS platforms. Um, and so basically, you know, what we're looking at for was to, to help accelerate the FIDO adoption. Um, you know, for relying parties, the relying parties won't have to do much. It's available on all the devices out there. Um, so they have incentive now to adopt the FIDO technology. And for authenticated vendors, you know, if they're, if RPs are willing to adopt it since it's in the platforms and everything, you get some ubiquitous, um, you know, deployment of FIDO technology. And so you can take the analogy of, you know, when Windows first came out with, um, you know, DOS and Windows, we didn't have a TCP ISP stack. And so you had to go off to WinSOC or some of the other companies and buy the, the TCP IP stack and then you had to install it and stuff. And people, you know, found that very cumbersome to do and to try to keep up on that technology. And so, you know, TCP IP really took off when we, you know, vendors started including it in the, in the stack itself. Um, so what's FIDO doing now? We're crafting standards for the future um, that will wind up being included in most of your major platforms. Um, the, you know, the web platform is special, right? It, it's the future API. We needed to be able to standardize this for all the um, web platforms out there. And so the place that we wind up doing that work is in the W3C, because all your browser vendors pay attention to W3C, et cetera. So we wanted to make sure that this wound up becoming a, a standard. And basically, it's a, how we get access from JavaScript to the crypto devices un, underlying, um, underlying the platform. And um, so the, the web API is one of the first that we've driven out of FIDO and into the W3C. Um, so basically, we have some specifications. We have the web platform API specifications, and we have the client to authenticator protocol CTAP. And so we've developed some web APIs, some key attestation formats, and signature formats. Those have been submitted over to the W3C and are active, and that's the web authentication working group in the W3C. So we have our, I believe, our third draft, working on our fourth draft, and we should be at candidate recommendation, most likely by the end of first quarter of 2017. We do have some implementations out there. Um, Mozilla has released their implementation, and Edge has released their, Edge Microsoft browser has released theirs, and I think Google will follow suit with their Chrome sets of APIs. Um, and then we have the client to authenticator protocol. Basically, this is, you know, communication between the client and an external authenticator, not necessarily built into the platform with a, Windows device, you wind up getting um, a TPM chip built into the, into the laptop or the desktop or whatever, and those are what we consider internal authenticators. An external authenticator would be a 
Ubico device or some other device that um, you can plug in a USB device, an NFC device, a Bluetooth device, and that's what you would use to communicate over, which would be CTAP, and we'll go over a little bit about that. Um, so basically the things that we wanted to standardize um, from, from a platform perspective are the things in red, which are the interfaces between the um, RP in the browser um, and the external authenticator. So from the, the bottom arrow represents CTAP. Um, the middle arrow represents, you know, basically the web API um, authentication and the dots represent the blobs or the things in the protocol, the, the data formats in the protocol that we wind up standardizing. And so base, the web API is, you know, allows us to have access to um, the, the FIDO compliant capabilities. Um, so we have a service request going over to the server. The server will then push back an authentication request, and this is basically JavaScript, right? So the server is going to push the JavaScript down to the, the browser. Since they're standardized APIs, it can work in Chrome or work in um, Edge or work in Firefox. And then the JavaScript APIs wind up um, calling down and request cryptographic operations to the authenticator. Um, the authenticators require a user gesture, which is either you know, it could be a pin, it could be a fingerprint, could be an iris scan. You know, the, the gesture devices are up to whatever, you know, whatever your device supports or your company wants to be, to push forward. Um, and what happens is it winds up coming back with a scope credential. Scope credentials are credentials that are scoped to that particular relying party itself. So there would be a key pair for every relying party that you wind up talking to um, for privacy reasons. And so the, the use case for the web authentication API here is we have a registration of an authenticator. So we go through the server, we go over and hit the relying party. Relying party says, you know, I don't know anything about you, so I'm going to do a re registration request. Um, and so it, once again, throws down the JavaScript down to the browser. The browser executes the JavaScript, you know, talks to the um, authenticator, creates the key, the authenticator winds up creating this key pair um, and returns a scope credential back to the um, relying party. The relying party can then register those, that particular public key um, or identifier of some sort, whatever the relying party wants to do so that it can remember you when the next time you come back in. And then once we have a registered authenticator, then we can go through the normal authentication request, right? We can go through the service request. So it's going to go over to the server. The server says, OK, I know who you are now because I recognize your public key. Um, so I'm going to throw down the authentication request. Um, and it's going to go through the same thing, going through the JavaScript request to the authenticator and then wind up signing the particular blob of data that came across from the server and response goes back to the um, um, relying party along with the, along with the um, attestations of the particular device itself. The attestations also go across on the registration and so this gives the relying party a chance to say I don't accept this type of device because the attestation would be on the particular authenticator that you're using. And so, you know, if I'm in a high security type environment, I may only want TPM chips or, or certain types of cryptographic devices to, to be able to do the key generation and signing aspects. So attestations become um, important in a, lot of, in a lot of cases where you want to tighten down what types of authenticators that, that the relying party winds up using. Um, Browser responsibilities in this. And so this is what the browser winds up doing is the browser is responsible for composing the messages for the operation. And it provides origin, right? Because you want to have, have 
security aspects and you know, origin of, of where this thing is particularly going. Um, and it computes the client data hashes, which means this is basically winds up becoming your signature. Um, processes any extensions. And so in the web specification, we have allowed for extensions. And so you can, pro you can create extensions. Maybe it's a location extension of some sort that you want, to, you want the browsers to implement um, to include you know, geolocation factors when you're doing the authentication so that the RP can determine, you know, I'm not going to allow something to come from this particular area. Um, so there are a few extensions that we've done by default. The EMV Co um, that was talked about earlier will wind up being an extension um, also to this, to the browser specification. Uh, it also provides the the ability for the you for the browser to actually throw, to um, display a UI in case the device doesn't handle a, a UI. So um, it, there's limited capabilities there, but it does allow for the browser to, to display a message or um, push push out text that may have come from the relying party and stuff, and then handles all the um, error key, you know error recovery and error handling and things. The authenticator's responsibility you know, is to perform platform operations. Every platform, you know, whether it be a Windows platform or an Android platform, um, also has its own cryptographic APIs. And so what happens is the JavaScript winds up calling those native um, cryptographic APIs. And so as part of FIDO support, you know, you will wind up seeing documentation from the various platform vendors of which APIs are actually used to generate the signatures and, and compose these particular messages. Because all, it, all it they're doing is from the JavaScript is calling down into the, in Windows case, the Windows native APIs, the Win32 APIs. Um, and then once again, process any extensions. The, the browser has the ability to either enforce in extensions or ignore extensions that, that may or may not be installed. And then once again, provide the attestations that you uh, will need from the various authenticators. So the web, a the web authentication API boils down to about two to four um, key APIs. One is the make credential, and it's how you do the registration, which is you know, the key generation with an attestation. And then a Git assertion um, also comes into hand you know, for, for authentication is, you know, mixes in state, facet ID, token binding ID, et cetera. And we'll talk a little bit about, about token binding in a minute. Um, and the key attestation, we've just gone through a major revision of the, of the attestations, trying to generalize the attestations. Um, there are different types of attestations out there. TPMs use a very use their own type of attestations, and so we didn't want to. I know Rolf, Rolf likes these attestations; he's been working on them um, quite a bit. But there are, you know, there are standards out there that we did not want to change, and so we wanted to allow things like the TPM attestation or the Android attestation to exist and not have to reinvent the wheel on this one. So we've come up with what I think is a fairly decent um, abstraction now for the attestations. And we're just about ready to publish that, um, that draft in the W3C. So you'll see a very simplified attestation model with the ability to add additional attestation formats if you so, so desire. Um, and signature format, um, you know, we've been around about this a little bit. You know, we've had other specifications in in FIDO, and where the signature format is a little bit different. Um, but I think we've come around to being able to have something that is compatible or expressible in both in being able to use other 
devices such as a U2F device or a UAF device um, with this particular specification. And here's the you know, high level operations on make credential and get assertions. Um, you can see the calls going over to, and this is on a CTAP particular type of protocol that you'd see because this is an external authenticator. And so the CTAP protocol and the web API protocol are very similar and we had to keep it this way so that you didn't have a major difference when you went from a, from a web, web interaction to um, this external authenticator interac interaction. And so both sets of APIs, the, what we're doing in the W3C for web authentication and then what we're doing over in, in FIDO for CTAP, you'll see a very, almost a mirror image of each other. Um, and this is a quick example of a web authentication API. It's very simple. Um, and you can see, you know, we've, we have our crypto parameters, we have our algorithm parameters, um, and we just wind up calling the um, make credential API here with all that information. It's gonna go down and call the native Windows 32 APIs, do the crypto operations that are here and return the results back up. So it's fairly easy to, you know, from a JavaScript, from a server side, an RP side, to be able to produce this and have it thrown down to the browser to, to actually implement. Browser operations, these are basically the, um, you know, what's required, what's optional as far as the web API is concerned. Um, so once again, it's very easy. Um, even Dick could wind up writing something like this. <laughs> Think so? Uh, authenticator operations, they're very similar um, in nature and you know, we can have cancel requests, error, error conditions here. Um, CTAP, as I said, is what you wind up using when you're calling out to an external device. Um, and you can see that, you know, we wind up going over, currently our specification is for you, transport levels that we've defined are USB, BLE, and NFC for right now. Um, you know, there may be needs for other ones like maybe QR code or something like that that um, may, may need to actually take place. You know, we'll probably be talking about some of those this week. Uh, and we are in revision two of um, CTAP and we have some implementations of CTAP out there now and we've done a little bit of interoperation on, on the CTAP protocol with some, some of the devices. And so I believe uh, tomorrow I'll show some of those during, or some, we'll show some of those during the, um, the FIDO 2.0 working group um, tomorrow. Uh, cases for, for CTAP is basically when you have you know, a phone, we have a Windows authenticator um, application that runs on our phones and, you know, or iOS or Android types of phones. And uh, this is, winds up using BLE um, to be able to generate the key pair and be able to authenticate to my Windows laptop um, so that I can then get access to any, any of my corporate sets of information. So in this case, I would just go ahead and, and have my application and hit the hit the app and then it would go ahead and sign me onto my Windows box, which signs me onto my um, domain controller, et cetera. Um, the current timeline that we're looking at is, as I said, the web authentication specification, we're looking at candidate recommendation in um, first quarter 2017 and we're shooting for the um, CTAP protocol to be in implementer's draft. It's currently in review draft now um, we expect it to be in um, implementation draft in 1Q also, but we already have some implementation, so we know what we believe that we have enough 
information to make the changes that we need after implementing it that once we make these changes, we think we can go to implementation draft at that particular point in time. Um, there's some orthogonal efforts going on and um, in, in IETF, we have the token binding work. And we have, you know, the current problem is you have bearer tokens. Whenever you do a web authentication, you wind up having cookies dropped on the relying party. Uh, and these, all, these wind up um, leading to, you know, replay attacks, et cetera, because they wind up being, you know, non-encrypted. They're not bound to any particular session or anything. Um, that means anybody can pick up one of these authentication cookies that are on the relying party and, re and wind up replaying it. And so the solution that we've been working on with the various browser vendors out there um, is to be able to take um, the TLS session and bind it and bind the cookies to the particular TLS session. So if you wind up picking up an authentication cookie on the, on the relying party side, you won't be able to replay that because it is encrypted for that particular TLS session. And so this past week, um, we've had some good interop between IE browser and Android server piece. So Android server turns on um, token binding by default, and we've turned on, um, in Edge, we've turned on token binding by default. So the traffic is now flowing if you have an Edge browser going between an Edge browser and an and a Android server, the cookies wind up getting automatically encrypted for you. Um, and so I imagine that Google will turn it on in Chrome at some point in time and Mozilla will implement it. And we wind up getting you know, the bear token issue um, fixed. And so you can imagine that we can also start to lock with this functionality that's IETF is doing, we can also use this to lock down the, any authentication tokens that wind up happening in, in FIDO also. There's also the OpenID um, Connect enhanced authentication profile work. And so how do we take advantage of, of FIDO with OpenID Connect? And this is one of the um, working groups that's going on in FIDO is basically defining the, the correct um, profile for OpenID that will wind up using um, FIDO technology. And so, in summary here, you know, we have FIDO authentication. We believe that, you know, the authenticators are pluggable, uses cryptographic technology. Um, you know, we're going to have web platform and OS platform support natively um, the FIDO technology and we will also be able to support the external authenticators. So, you know, we're continuing to try to expand the ecosystem. I think, you know, with the work that's been going on in FIDO and W3C and IETF, we believe that, you know, most of this stuff is going to wind down this year. And we've done enough testing that we know where the buying points wind up being and, you know, the issues wind up being. Uh, you know, there's been companies that have been shipping the FIDO technology for quite a while. Um, and with this change into the web platforms and stuff, we haven't done that much change to the technology. We've just made it so that the web platform vendors can actually, and the OS platform vendors can actually implement it and maintain it. You know, having a complex set of APIs and things and data formats is not what platform vendors really want. They want something very simple so that when we make a change, we're not hitting the APIs and stuff. We're just hitting the, the various formats. And so it would just affect the uh, relying parties, et cetera. And so these are where you can look at the latest. These are public um, URLs for the various specifications that we've made public, the latest sets of um, specifications. So you can look at these. As I said, we continue to update the, the web authentication spec as we roll out new functionality and tidy up the, the specification. We're probably on a six to eight week um, due diligence on trying to update that. We'd like to have it done quicker, but we have some slow editors um, in the group. 
So we've got to get some faster people. Ralph. Um, so that's basically what I had to say about you know what's going on in, as far as getting uh, more ubiquitous support for FIDO in the in the platforms and and things. <laughs>